hi students in this session we are going to learn about edible films and coatings from starches and non starch edible films and coating are novel techniques of primary packaging that are encased or enrobed on a food product to prolong the shelf life and to retain its freshness based on the material that are used to develop edible films and coating they can be categorized as polysaccharides proteins and lipids a composite coating or a film may be developed either with one of these individual polymers or using a combination of two or more of these polymeric matrices edible films or coatings developed from polysaccharides consist of starch derivatives and non starch derivatives although coatings by polysaccharide polymers may not provide a good water vapor barrier but these coatings can act as sacrificing agents retarding moisture loss from food products objective of this lecture is that to understand the different types of edible coating prepared from starch and non starch based polysaccharides to gain knowledge about the applications of edible coating prepared from starch and non starch based polysaccharides first we are going to discuss about edible films and coatings from starches starch is a polysaccharide consisting of amylose and amylopectin connected with alpha 1 4 beta 16 glycosidic linkages out of the two polymer amylose has better film properties bearing linear than amylopectin which is highly branched the main advantage of starch is that it is comparatively cheaper source and readily available than the other film forming materials starches are chemically modified to be used as a film forming agent we will see some of the modified starches in this session first modified starch is cross linked starch let us see some details about that starches are modified by cross linking phosphorus oxychloride sodium trimetaphosphate or adipic anhydride to prevent disintegration of starch granules modified starches especially designed for formation of films and coatings are not intended to maintain granule integrity a coating starch is functional only when the majority of starch granules are entirely disrupted and amylose and amylopectin polymers are completely dispersed in the aqueous medium thus starches specially modified to possess useful coating attributes or notably cross linked second type of modified starch is substituted starch starches are often replaced with various reagents to vary their properties and functionality reagents used for substitution such as succinic anhydride acetic anhydride and propylene oxide attach covalently to carbohydrate polymers inside the starch granule 
Several positive characteristics contributed by substitution of modifications include substituted functional groups help to open up the granule increasing its affinity for water. Second one, the resulting in lower starch gelatinization temperatures and better hydration. Third is, the resultant starch gel is much less firm and exhibits better clarity. Fourth one, substituted starch form gels that are more resistant to breakdown during freeze thaw cycles. Unlike native starches, where due to the process of retrogradation during such cycles, the starch losses out its water and thereby its functionality. Then we will see few points about oxidized starches. Oxidized starches enhance the adhesion properties of food starches in coating applications such as batters. All approved starch oxidizing reagents that are commonly used in batter applications are sodium hypochlorite, sodium chloride and calcium hypochlorite. One of the important properties desired for coatings is moisture permeability because water vapor needs to be allowed to escape from food during cooking without peeling off pieces of the coating into the fryer. Food coatings that are used for deep frying such as tempura coatings, beer battered coatings and other types of coatings for meats, fish and vegetables often contain these oxidized starches. To preserve the crispiness and the eating quality, french fries are often coated with a batter. A coating in order to be an ideal batter coating should firmly adhere to the surface of the food throughout the freezing and frying processes. Use of bread crumbs along with this batter facilitates the frying process. Next is about acid hydrolyzed starch. Another method of modifying starch is to treat it with a mineral acid to partially devolumerize its molecules as desired. Acid modified starches are used in applications where there is a considerable amount of solids present. Examples of such include imitation cheese, jelly candies, processed meats and extruded snacks and cereals. Acid modification are thinning aids the purpose of defranging the amylopectin portion of starch located within granule amorphous regions moderately so that the treated starch behaves more amylos like due to an increasing the linear component. Now let us discuss about the next type of modified starch that is high amylase corn starch. This starch is produced from the genetic mutant variety of corn that has higher ratios of amylose than that of amylopectin. Starches with amylose contain 50, 70 and 90 percentage are used for the formation of films or coatings.
the only disadvantage of such starch is that being highly crystalline it requires high temperatures to achieve complete gelatinization films made from high amylose starch demonstrated to achieve increased tensile strength and elongation properties with increasing concentrations of amylose experiments conducted with these starches showed a significant increase in shelf life of the product when coated and fried deep fry battered vegetables and other snack items have shown to retain better crispiness for a prolonged period even after they have left the fire films developed from pea starch and rice starches have shown to possess better oxygen barrier properties than that of protein based films the last type of starch is maltodextrins these are used as an additive for coatings as they reduce the brittleness of the films produced these dextrins products are soluble in cold water and have good adhesive and fat film forming properties dextrins are often used in confectionery products as a coating and as an alternative to gum axia the films formed from these sugars have good oxygen barrier properties and high shelf life the important thing in edible film and coatings is additives now we will see about additives to increase the flexibility and extensibility of the films are coatings produced additives like polyols sugars and low molecular weight substances maltodextrins detoxifiers humectants and lipids have been used extensively polyols sugars maltodextrins mainly act as plasticizers in film forming to increase the extensibility of films but sugar make the films more brittle or glass like the tagifiers act to lower the stickiness produced in the films humectants and lipids are mainly used to improve the barrier properties and moisture transfer rate in the films formed and we must to know how to form films by using starch in lab scale the starch dispersion is cast up on surfaces like glass plastic or plexiglass using gardener draw down bar a film can be textured or shiny depending upon the surfaces used the film caster is then dry letting the water to evaporate completely and peel off using a backing material with which the film peels off with ease commercially the process is done continuously in rotating wheels we should know the applications of starch based edible films and coatings first one is to enhance the appearance first one is to enhance appearance shellac based coatings are commonly used to enhance the appearance of chocolate pan items and also to prevent cocoa butter from staining the packaging example cover chocolate covered peanuts malted milk balls and jelly beans second application is to enhance flavor to reinforce flavor impact of the product in overall coatings 
may be flavored or also to create a novel impact on the product. Next application is acting as augmentation and moisture barriers. The basic properties of a film are coating to prevent moisture loss from the food or creating a barrier between the food and atmospheric augmentation. Thus, enhancing the shelf life of the product. The last application is antimicrobial effect. Addition of certain spices or other ingredients on the surface of the coatings on food increases the shelf life of the food by retarding the bacterial growth. Second part of this session is about edible films and coatings from non-starch based polysaccharides. Polysaccharides mostly gums are hydrocolloids of high molecular weight and water soluble they readily form hydrogen bonds with water the polysaccharides due to the size and conformation of their molecule are capable of the polysaccharides due to the size and conformation of their molecules are capable to form thick aqueous solutions because of both intermolecular hydrogen bonding between polymer chains and resulting friction when exposed to shear gum solutions are gel when applied on the surface of food material and dry they leave a film that consists of specific plasticity tensile strength clarity and solubility physiogenomics the formation of micelles is responsible for the development of films on surface because these structures are preserved during drying hence based on the structural arrangement and complexity of polysaccharide molecules films from various gums consist of different attributes which are dependent on the properties of gum like molecular weight absence of branching electrical charge etc in other words gums that is of high molecular weight linear and non ionic vessels in strong films which peel off at a stretch uniformly at a dry thickness of 5 mm to form a film first the gum is to dissolved in water at a concentration suitable enough to be casted upon a surface with the help of a casting knife a uniform thin layer of paste is drawn on a smooth surface such as a glass plate a stainless steel sheet or even a plastic sheet This is then dried to appropriate moisture or humidity level and peeled. The peeling of the film from the casting plate depends on the kind of gum polymer used and also the thickness of the cast. For example, gums like methyl cellulose, alginate and carboxy methyl cellulose are soluble in cold water and hence films formed by them similarly will be soluble in cold water likewise gums that involve heat for dissolution will be insoluble in cold water example agar the hydration properties solubility and intermolecular chain associations of polysaccharide gums are the factors responsible for their film forming properties now let us discuss about classification based on structure of polysaccharides gum polymers being hydrocolloids are of high molecular weight gum polymers are of following types first type is either linear consisting of one sugar monomer 
linear consisting of a repeated dimer linear a sugar chain on the linear backbone second type is batch consisting of a mixture of different sugars moreover polysaccharides can consist of either a neutral charge negative charge or positive charge due to the presence of various chemical groups attached to individual monosaccharide units now we will see about linear neutral polysaccharides these polysaccharides display the best flim forming properties with great flim strength being linear and of non ionic nature polymer chains combine more closely to develop strong flims an important phenomenon associated with these flim forming properties is the hydration once the gum is hydrated by dissolving it cold or heated water the molecules arrange themselves in a manner to form intramolecular networks to give rise to the formation of flims examples of linear neutral gums include agar cardlan and serial beta glucan methyl cellulose hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose gelan and konja we will learn about different types of linear neutral polysaccharides one by one first one is agar agar is a mixture of agarose and agaropectin commercial food grade agars obtained from red sea weeds gelidium species and gracilaria species comprises only agarose fraction because during processing agaropectin fractions are removed applications for agar are mostly based on its gelling ability being more stable at low ph and high temperature conditions compared to other gelling systems agar solution gels at a temperature range of 90 to 103 degrees celsius to avoid premature gelation during the development of agar film the solution and casting surface must be kept above the agarose gel setting temperature agar film is transparent and strong but is insoluble in water under ambient conditions when a 4% solution of agar is cast at a thickness of 0.02 inches then dried film is sufficiently strong to peel off the casting surface in one stretch unbroken the tensile strength and puncture strength of these films were 2540 g and 2150 g but these films are brittle and lack elasticity or strength we will learn some more details about methyl cellulose it is a chemically modified form of cellulose where a methyl group is added as a functional group onto the hydroxyl group of glucose units to provide super clarity and thermal gelation methyl cellulose completely dissolves in cold water forming clear solution and gels at a temperature of 48 to 64 degrees celsius on heating when a 3% solution of high viscosity methyl cellulose is cast at a thickness of 0.01 inch its dry film has enough strength to peel off in one piece these films had tensile strength of 760 g and 1400 g and puncture strengths of 350 g and 830 g respectively and are elastic in nature than the agar films the next type of linear neutral polysaccharide is inulin inulin commercially obtained from chicory root and jerusalem artichoke it is a low molecular weight molecule and hence does not have good flim forming properties it is water soluble only up to 25% at room temperature and its solubility in hot water is almost 50% but as soon as it cools down it begins to crystallize to form white flaky sugar icing coating 
The last type of linear neutral polysaccharide is conja. It is a linear hetero polysaccharide polymer obtained from the roots of the plant amorphous species consisting of glucose and mannose units in the ratio of 5 is to 8. On exposure to alkali or heat treatment, conjac solution gels due to the hydrolysis of acetyl group present in it. This gum forms strong decent films due to its high molecular weight and nanoionic nature. The second classification based on the structure of polysaccharide is linear anionic polysaccharides. Supplementing anionic groups in polysaccharides causes them to imbibe water readily during hydration and prevent the formation of excessive tight fiber structure when dry. Upon drying, the intermolecular network formed during hydration is preserved. Therefore, all these gums from forms the good films. The film forming properties of these gums depends on the extent and charge distribution on the polymer molecules. Because of this, either the gum will be completely soluble in cold water or partially soluble such as kappa carazinan, iota carazinan and pectin which less ion, anionic and thus require application of heat to hydrate the polymer. Let us learn about different types of linear anionic polysaccharides one by one. First linear anionic polysaccharide is sodium alginate. Alginate present as salts of sodium, calcium, magnesium and barium in brown seaweeds in gelled form is extracted by acid treatment to convert alginate to alginic acid followed by alkali treatment to produce water soluble sodium alginate. Alginate film produced from 4% concentration and thickness of 20 inches showed that it had a tensile strength of 1500 gram and puncture strength of 830 gram. It has been observed that cross-linking sodium alginate with calcium formed better films with increased tensile strength due to elimination of negative charges. The next type of linear anionic polysaccharide is pectin. Pectin is a byproduct produced from peels of citrus fruits or apple pomace commercially. Pectin has good gelation properties so it is used to form strong films when gelation conditions exist. The gelation properties of pectin are influenced by the degree of esterification. When compared to a alginate films, pectin films are weaker. A film formed with 8% concentration and thickness of 20 ml had tensile strength of 3850 gram and puncture strength of 1120 gram. The second classification based on structure of polysaccharides is linear cationic polysaccharide. In this classification, we will look at about cytosan. Cytosan is derived from the exoskeletons of crustaceans and mollusks. It is obtained by alkaline deacetylation of cytine, the main principal component of mollusk. Commercial cytosan is 85% deacetylated. Cytosan forms missile-like groups from fully acetylated segments of polysaccharide chain stretched by electrostatic repulsion. It is insoluble in cold water at neutral pH but soluble in glacial acetic acid and dilute HCl at room temperature. A plastic wrap made from cytosan when used to store fresh mangoes demonstrated an extended shelf life of 18 days without any microbial growth and off flavor. The next classification based on the structure of polysaccharide is linear substituted neutral polysaccharide. In this classification, let us see about fenugreek gum. Fenugreek gum is obtained by milling the endosperm of fenugreek seeds. It is a linear galactomannan comprising chains of mannose linked to galactose by beta 14 glycosidic linkage. A film formed with 3% concentration and thickness of 40 ml had tensile strength of 2330 gram and puncture strength of 230 gram. Next linear substituted neutral polysaccharide is guar gum. Guar gum is the crushed endosperm powder obtained from guar seeds. 
it is soluble in cold water but it achieves its hydration through and than that of fenugreek gum it forms more viscous gel due to high molecular weight it exhibits better stability during freeze thaw cycles a film formed at 3% concentration and thickness of 40 ml exhibited tensile strength of 4580 g and puncture strength of 655 g the last classification based on the structure of polysaccharide is branched polysaccharides branching of polysaccharides affects the film forming properties of polysaccharides the globular conformation of polymer molecules results in very high molecular weight that does not allow the formation of missiles as a result films with weak tensile strength are produced even when casted at higher concentration and higher film thickness than the linear polysaccharide examples of such include gum arabic gatti karaya and large gum these when applied to form a film do not peel off in one piece instead of has the tendency flaking abruptly in this branched polysaccharides we will discuss about gum arabic now gum arabic is a tree sap obtained from the stem and branches of sub sagarian acacia singa and acacia shayal trees gum arabic in solutions forms weaker hydrogen bonding due to their limited size and extent to branching this gum do not perfectly immobilize in water even though it dissolves and forms hydrogen bonds with water as a result this results in low thickening property as compared to other linear polysaccharides next type of branched polysaccharides is karaya karaya is an exudate obtained from circuli rains a bushy tree found in north india it is a branched acetylated polysaccharide in contrast to gum arabic when the solution is casted to form a film it coats uniformly and even after drying does not crack in this last part of this session we will see the application of edible films and coatings from non starch based polysaccharides first application is a coating of fruits and vegetables polysaccharides like starch dextrins or cellulose derivatives are used for coating fruits and vegetables to control respiration loss and also to prevent moisture to escape the second application as confectionery coatings mostly done to enhance the appearance of chocolates and candies by providing a shiny glazed and smooth surface gums in combination with sugar alcohols are used for this type of process third application is a bakery icings and coatings to enhance the appeal texture and shelf life of the bakery products like buns or donuts are glazed with sugar coatings in combination with sodium alginate and gum arabic let us now summarize the points so far discussed in this session edible films prepared from non starch based polysaccharides demonstrate better tensile property and flexibility and extensibility linear neutral polysaccharides exhibit the best film forming properties amongst all other gum polymers one or more of these non starch based polysaccharides can be combined to exhibit films of desired strength durability extensibility and flexibility edible films or coatings prepared from starch based polysaccharides are mostly commonly used due to its abundant availability and low cost of the production 